Um, one of the tools that we have, we have a lot of tools on efficiencymain.com. One of them is kind of a fun one in the theme of DIY. I picked this one out. Um, you can go down to your, to the Portland Library and check out, like a book, um, an electricity monitor kit. We've provided them to all the libraries in the state. You check it out like a book, go home, and you can check any 110 volt appliance in your home. You can unplug your refrigerator, put this thing in the wall, plug your refrigerator into this and monitor it for an hour a day. <clears throat> There's a little chart as to how to do the math and you'll find out how much your refrigerator is costing you per year. You'll find out that free freezer that grandma gave you, that freezer chest that runs 24 seven in the garage. You thought it was such a good deal. You might find out it was not, maybe not as good of a deal than you thought. Um, or you maybe things may go the other way. You may be worried about that big screen TV and then worried about how much electricity it uses. And you might plug it into this and you may find it's not using a whole lot of electricity, but this will enable you to find those devices that are using electricity that you didn't realize. It may give you an opportunity to either unplug them. Sometimes they use power when they're turned off um, or, or, or replace them or just stop using them altogether. So th that's the scan of the rebates, the loans, tools and the last thing i'm going to present is we have a fabulous installer database this is where you can find hundreds of companies near you who are licensed in their trade they're insured and they've signed a code of conduct as to how they'll work with customers and we're issuing tens of thousands of rebates to mainers every year who are using these these contractors including evergreen home performance um, which is where Richard Burbank works and is, is the CEO. So you can pick whatever service you're looking for, insulation or heat pumps or heat pump water heaters. Pick, set your zip code, um, pick the radius you want to search, and we'll give you a list of them meeting those criteria, and we'll sort them in order of those who have helped the most customers. Well, we found is there's a reason <laughs> people are uh, whoever um, whatever company is helping most customers um, typically has the highest satisfaction so that's the that's the way we sort them that's the default sort and that's all on efficiencymain.com um, those are the four things I said I'd cover our website is efficiencymain.com and this is our toll-free number and uh, hopefully that's helpful from a program point of view and a rebates and financing uh, tools and database point of view now I want to turn it over to my good friend and colleague, Richard Burbank. Richard, take it away. I'll stop sharing and turn it over to you. And you're on mute, Richard. I was saying really good things. I said, thank you very much, Andy. <laughs> okay. Can everyone see the presentation? Yes. Um, so, as Andy said, I, I'm going to be focusing on do-it-yourself winter prep preparation, and this is kind of a mini workshop on how you can take advantage of this awesome rebate, which goes until the end of next month. Oh, before we get started, Richard, we have a question from Ginger. Maybe she has made for you. Yeah. Yeah, I apologize. Uh, I just had a quick question before we wrap up that first section. We are looking at adding some insulation to our crawl space. And we are looking at mineral wool, probably. Would that be um, something that we could get reimbursement for? Um, Richard, I'll start that. You can correct me if I make a mistake. Um, the installation rebates are very, very generous. 40% up to $4,000 is the minimum. Um, it can go as high as 80% up to $8,000. There's a lot of fine print. One of the critical fine prints is in order to qualify for the rebate, you'll need to hire one of the residential registered vendors that's on our website. Um, th those rebates are not for DIY. The okay, DIY thank one you. spoke is, and the water heaters you can install yourself, but we, we would not be giving uh, a rebate for uh, mineral wool insulation. Did okay. I get that right, Richard? I, I, think, I think so, I think that's correct. Yeah. Okay, and, thank you. But welcome. if we did if we did go through one of your um, installers, then there would be a possibility of some sort of a rebate. Uh, yes, somewhere between 40 and 80% of the cost we would pay, very, very generous. We've never had such generous rebates before. Um, and um, we, we do a customer satisfaction survey of customers and people are very, very pleased with the work that they're able to hire. Um, Richard will point out if I forget to, 
I just want to be honest. These guys are booked out right now. You're not going to have anyone come out this week. Um, the, they're booked out, uh, out weeks into the future. Um, so I, I want to ma manage expectations, but we do have lots of great uh, installers on at efficiencymain.com. And if you go with them, they're very, very generous rebates. D does that help, Ginger? It does. And um, I assume on the website, it talks about what types of insulation you can use that will be um, acceptable. Uh, yes, I could go through that uh, um, now. But yes, it's on efficiencymain.com. That, that I'm, I'm happy to check that out. Thank you. On okay. the rebate claim form, if you find the rebate claim form, it's very clear right there exactly what, what's covered. Thank you. Well, well, thank you for the question and thank you, Andy, for the wonderful introduction and thank you, Aaron, for hosting and Troy and the rest of the team at the City of Portland. This is very exciting. So the focus of my talk is just strategizing with you and I want to be your resource um, in trying to figure out how to best best utilize uh, this do it yourself uh, winter preparation rebate. Um, so I'm gonna go through each, each one of these elements in case you're a little unfamiliar of what they are and they're all just different, different options. And uh, there's lots of great ways of, uh, of putting $100 to good use and do it yourself. Uh, so I, I'm just gonna kind of lay, lay the groundwork, but I definitely want questions. Um, if you wanna save your question to the end, uh, you're welcome to do that. Or if you wanna just jump in, uh, we, we purpose set this up so that it was engaging and we want to meet you where you are. But one thing I will say uh, right off the top is that some of us own our homes and some of us are tenants and uh, I'm actually a tenant where I am. <laughs> and there's things that I, I can do as a tenant um, and there, there's things that I have done in a house that I owned in the past uh, to, to get in uh, small or deep. Um, so I just kind of want to give you a sense of where to go. There's a list of all the different, uh, different items. But first, in getting started, um, how do you know what to do? Well, I just want to put a plug. There's, there's a big backlog of customers for us vendors uh, on that Efficiency Main website, and we would all love to hire you, to, and we would train you how to do this. <laughs> and we would actually pay you while we train you. And uh, you know what's not like to like about that? We're right in Portland. Um, if you're not from Portland, there's vendors all over the state and you can use that vendor locator tool to find a job. Uh, you can also do what I did, which was start a weatherization business. I had a house in Rockland and I started on my, on my own. I realized I needed professional equipment to finish insulating. So I am... I am a graduated do-it-yourselfer. I ended up starting a business. Uh, I started in 2004 working on my house, and by 2006, I started a business. And we need more of these, don't we, Andy? We need more businesses. And I, we definitely need more competition for me, but we have a lot of houses to do, right? <laughs> we, we've got another 700,000 left. Uh, hopefully, we can get them done this month. I hope. But I will admit now, you know, back then there wasn't many businesses that did this. So I, I, I will admit now I probably would ask for a job before starting a business because there's a lot of tricky things. But um, but just know that it's this is a growing industry. Um, there, there's hiring going on. There's uh, rising uh, wages and benefits. And we have jobs right here in Portland all around the state. Um, but if you're not going to work for a company or start a company, this is the next best thing. Um, this is a really excellent book. I was looking this up so that I could find a picture of it and share with you. Uh, and on Amazon, they know everything about me. And they said, you last bought this in 2011. <laughs> I was a little shocked, but it is a very good book. I haven't seen the completely revised and expanded, but this will help you with very easy do-it-yourself tasks, and it will help you with more in-depth stuff because I got in the deep end and um, some of you may want to do that yourself. I was raised that way uh, for several generations and I'm sure so, so many of you have been or many of you are very interested in doing that by necessity or interest. So this is a really good book that I, that I recommend and I'm sure there's others, but this one I can heartily recommend. 
Another is I started a playlist on YouTube and I shared it with Erin and hopefully she can get the word out on this playlist. And what I did was I did my best to search for all the different things, how to insulate ductwork with this old house. That's a really good one. Do it yourself, attic air sealing. Um, how to use mastic and sealed ductwork. Um, how to use a professional spray foam gun. They're, they're, they're all there. Now, um, I'm a little opinionated. So I see some things that are like, oh, that's mostly correct. I'd do it this way. But you know, it's great to have a resource. And YouTube definitely has some things that might not be the best way. So I can't guarantee everything on this playlist is exactly how I would do it or how we would do it, but it looked like a really good start to me. So that's a resource you can go to. And you know, when you start, you know, you can just get started or you can go to some of those resources, but I just wanna kind of give you some ways that you can start if you're a tenant, if you're a homeowner. Um, it's good to start at this time of year with proof on the roof. And that's when you're getting that frost in the morning and the, you're heading off to work. If you work in the morning and you look up and why is it melted right here? And why is it melted over there on the roof? And I, I'm very dangerous to, uh, to be your driver if I'm, if I'm being your driver going into town in the morning uh, on certain mornings because I'm, oh, wow, look at that. That's something around the chimney. Oh, look at that. That's the plumbing stack. Um, but but that's, that's a big thing you can do this time of year. And later when there's a snow load, the other proof on the roof is all those icicles. That gives you a clue that something's going on. Uh, next is the old fashioned, you find the drafts. And you can go around the house, the colder the day or the windier the day, you're gonna feel drafts. But don't get confused about the ghost draft in the windows because a cold window will have sheeting a waterfall of cold air, even if it's not leaky, but you can just use your hand. Um, and there's other tools like you can use a, a party fogger or something like that, um, but you can just use your hand. You don't need anything uh, really, uh, really important uh, and expensive. But if you do end up rushing at the very end and buying this toward the end of the year, you've got 30 days to install it. And a great time to find those leaks is about January 15th when it's the coldest days of the year and it's below zero. And that's when your house is just roaring air through all that cold air is coming in down low, all that warm air is leaving out high. So it's a good time. Um, but before the winter comes, it's good to walk around and make sure that all your windows are shut. I know that's silly to say, but when I've done blower door air leakage tests, I almost always find half a dozen windows that aren't closed. And, you know, that's the biggest leak. That's the cheapest leak. To, and there's no rebate for you going up and closing <laughs> your window because <laughs> you don't need one. Or take that air conditioner out um, and make sure if you have kids, teenagers, you know, I've got a 14 year old. He's always open in the window. I'm like, it's a heat on, you know, <laughs> let's turn down the thermostat. Um, so make sure everything's closed, uh, make sure your storm windows in place, if you have storm windows. And finally, you know, uh, you can do a quick check and make sure you find the big holes in the attic and basement. That could be like an attic hatch, like a pull down stairway that could be going down to the basement where there's a walk up stair and a bulkhead and there's a big old hole and you can feel that. So you can kind of strategize, huh? Where is it all coming in? And on the coldest days of the year, especially in January, that's a great time to double check, but don't wait, you know, make sure your windows are closed. So that's some stuff you can do to begin with. And, you know, I, I have to say safety first, right? Um, you don't wanna uh, be using foam gun foam up above your head and get a big glob of foam in your eye uh, or be stirring up dust and inhaling stuff that you really don't want to inhale and fiberglass when you're working around that. And you don't want to disturb lead uh, or asbestos. There are some things that can be asbestos in your attic, which is vermiculite. There's old steam pipes that could have asbestos on it. Um, and sometimes electrical stuff can be a little shoddy. Um, and you want to make sure as you're moving around some of these spaces that you really feel secure and you're within your, um, you're, you're safe. Um, so it's not, it's not for everyone. 
And there's many very safe ways to start uh, that, that you don't have to go crawl around in the attic like I'm in an attic right now. You got to watch out for those nails. You need, you need you know, head protection so you don't, something doesn't stick you in the, in, in the head. Um, and falls, you don't want to fall. So just, I, I, I mentioned this, cold air comes in down low, low, warm air leaves out to the top. So you're down in the basement and you're a spectator of cold air coming in or you're feeling around the windows on the first floor as cold air comes in. And if you do have a safe way of getting up into the attic, you can look around and feel or get a piece of toilet paper as a visual indicator to see where air is moving up. Sometimes around a chimney, there's a gap and there's just air rushing up on the coldest days of the year. So you, you can start to look around. Um, if you feel like it, you can wear a Tyvek suit and crawl into some of these ugly crawl spaces and really try to figure out what's going on. That's some duct work where the duct wrap is hanging on for dear life and there's insulation. And why is that floor still cold? You know, you got to kind of figure some of that stuff out. And some of this stuff, really, you might need to call a professional or buy that book and really dig in. So find winnable battles. Don't jump right in and fight the biggest battle of your life to make your home more energy efficient. It's a hundred dollar rebate. Winter's coming around the corner. You're looking for um, easy holes to access and to fix. That's a hole up in the attic. This is more of an advanced thing where you're actually going up into the attic. You don't want to fall through the ceiling and land on the kitchen table. Um, your, your significant other will be very upset with you. Um, but that's an example of a hole you can seal with foam gun foam or the tops of walls. But the very first thing is weather stripping. So as you go through, if you notice, you feel, you feel um, drafts around your door. Um, weather stripping is something that wears out. The cat can help you wear it out by scratching it. Um, so uh, I would avail yourself of the help in the various stores. Main hardware might be a good place to go or you know, Home Depot, Lowe's or other hardware stores. And, uh, and you can take a picture with your phone and come in with, with some of your weather stripping and where you're finding it and they can strategize with you on how to get weather stripping. So that's a very easy place to go, but I will caution you you have to install it right because you can make that door so hard to close because you sealed that up so tight or because you put something different in. Now your knuckles get nicked every time you close the door. So it's not so straightforward, but just kind of think about it methodically. And, um, you know, that that is a good a good opportunity. Sometimes there is some uh, upgrading you can do to hatches as well. Hatches to your side attic or something. Um, I suspect that that would be accepted under the efficiency main uh, program. So look around for those uh, for those airflow patterns. Uh, next, I have on the list is window and door caulking. You know, there's there's caulking uh, like you see down below. There's uh, you know the uh, cord weather seal or the rope caulk. Um, sometimes uh, you want to caulk something that you don't want to have caulked forever. And you can talk with your, your hardware store. Um, they were out of it the day I was there at Main Hardware, but there's a cool product called Seal and Peel, and it's a reversible caulking. So if you're down in the basement and those old, old uh, window, basement windows are there, you want to open them in the summer, but they're just a pain to, uh, to weather strip, you can actually use Peel and Seal to seal that crack, and it'll be very tight. And then if you want to open the window later, you can just kind of pop that out. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for your normal windows, but maybe in a pinch you could. I would use rope caulk instead. Um, there's other things you can do. Next is a spray foam sealant. Um, that is the uh, retail version um, where it has the straw within it. That is a very effective sealer for a lot of different types of holes uh, in the attic, in the basement, but don't use it as caulk. A lot of people get confused and think it's magical. It has a little wand, it's foam, it insulates, but it's a horrible caulk because it goes everywhere and it gets all over your clothes. It never looks pretty. You can never do a, a, a perfect line. So you don't do it in aesthetic ways. That's where you use caulking. 
Um, you can use a caulk gun uh, to do that or like painter's caulk. What you use this for is holes underneath the, the kitchen sink, for example, if you feel all this air coming around the plumbing where it comes in through the floor, or if you have a hydronic heating system, meaning you got baseboards, you know, all those holes coming through the floor, if you've got a lot of cold air coming in through the basement, sometimes you can seal that. Um, up in the attic, some of those holes I was showing you. Uh, but it is very sticky on your hands and you can get a professional gun. Um, the gun, I don't think qualifies for this rebate, but allows the cans of foam to go a lot further. Uh, and again, the staff might be able to help. Looks like Andy, you have something cool to say. Uh, yes, I want to let you know that Mac Maccabee has a hand up. Oh, Maccabee, yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, Richard, uh, environmental issues with the spray foam sealant. Uh, it seems like I've heard somewhere that there's, uh, you know, some controversy about it, or is that incorrect? Well, um, this is a sealant, and then there's spray foam that you spray on a wall. And uh, the spray that you spray on the wall definitely has, you know, a lot of fumes that you need to uh, evacuate the house during that installation. For this, in small quantities, there are fumes like paints and other things. So you want to be careful with your respiratory protection. If you get into a real confined space, you might want to wear an organic filter respirator. Make sure you read the instructions for safety. Uh, but in terms of environmental concerns, um, this is a very small targeted product. Uh, caulking, if that could do the job, that's always better. Um, but the, uh, the wide spray of spray foam, um, that, that is, uh, that's maybe what people are talking about. Um, does that answer your question? It does, thanks. Yep. Um, so there's some great videos uh, that you can look at on, on how to operate this, um, but it's, it's a very effective sealant on larger holes that are not in your living space in a finished surface. Uh, same goes for outsides. You know, a lot of times I'll see foam squirted all on, along the outside. You can use caulking for that. Um, or if you have a big gap and you need to use caulking, they do have uh, gap fillers, which is, uh, you know, a tube of, of foam, uh, uh, they call it backing rod, but talk to your hardware store, or the person at the, uh, at the, at the store to help you strategize, take pictures of what you're looking for, because they, they, they can help you. Um, one thing I will say is do not use foam, even the fire block foam on a chimney or a heat producing device. That is not meant for that purpose. There is a special caulking that is intumescent and designed to go up against chimneys to seal gaps. So make sure you talk to your, uh, your folks at the hardware store about that. Um, window insulation shrink kits. This is a very effective solution. Um, this is a variation of what the window dressers does. And window dressers has very cost-effective window treatments um, it's great. Uh, it's great for if you own the house or if you want to invest a little bit more and you can get into their community builds. It's a great uh, organization to volunteer for. This insulator kit, it's not two layers like those insert, um, insert storms, but these are very effective at sealing leaks if you can install it correctly. Um, one potential issue, I had my neighbor call me yesterday or a couple of days ago on Sunday saying, hey, I'm installing window insulation kits. Do you have a hairdryer? I'm like, yeah, I don't have a hairdryer. <laughs> so, you know, I think you need a hairdryer. So that's one thing going into it, but they are very effective. And as a tenant, you know, it's one of the, one of the rites of passage, you know, you're in your apartment and the windows leak like crazy. And if you are on the top floor, you might not feel the cold air coming in, but all that heat is leaving. So it's important to seal them up even if you don't feel cold air because your poor neighbors on the ground floor are having all the cold air to replace the heat that's leaving. And if the heat stays in your unit, all the better, right? Um, so next is pipe insulation. So there's whole sections in the pipe, uh, in the pipe insulation area um, in, in, all, in all these different stores. Uh, I checked it out with these folks. If you have a hydronic system, which means 
it's hot water going through your baseboards or, or even radiators. Sometimes they convert steam radiators into hydronic. Uh, these type of plastic uh, Armacell brand should work fine. If you're a little unsure, if it feels more like a swimming noodle, it's good to double check to make sure it's rated for temperatures above 180 degrees, otherwise it'll melt. But this is super effective. Insulation works best when you have a big temperature difference and you do with a pipe. It's 180 degrees in there when it starts out and the basement is probably 60 or 50 uh, plus or minus. And that's a big temperature difference. And you're starting out with no insulation, copper, or in some cases, the plastic, uh, plastic piping. This has a huge, huge impact. But if you have steam pipes which a lot of homes in, in Portland still have, uh, you know, the steam uh, really, really does need the pipe insulation even more because part of how steam works is it dumps all the heat of evaporation out into wherever it condenses against. And you want it to condense against the radiator in your room and not against the pipe in your basement. So often it's all been removed uh, uh, because what was removed was asbestos. Uh, be on the lookout for traces of asbestos. If you are a tenant and you are super charged up to do the biggest thing possible and you can't find anything after the windows or weather stripping, it's more advanced. I would say it's right up there with advanced, but you could ask them if, ask your landlord if you could install pipe insulation, even for a few runs. That's a huge rate of return, especially with steam. And some of the videos talk about the fiberglass insulation that you use for steam. Uh, that has a big, big impact. But there's, you know, there, there's some tricks to it. So make sure you, you, you research that. Finally, um, we're getting into another kind of heat distribution. You know, and these water, hot water and steam, and now ducts, uh, for forced hot air, that assumes that your unit doesn't have heat pumps heating it. And hopefully, you know, your landlord uh, may consider it in the future, or you as a homeowner may consider that. Because if you totally change over to heat pumps, everything you've done for your old heating system, ducts or, or pipes may not be as effective if you're leaning on those heat pumps more. But there's a lot, a lot of heat waste uh, with uh, metal ductwork running through basements. And there's some great videos on the playlist. And insulating those pipes, you know, metal is a terrible insulator. <laughs> you know, insulating those pipes, I mean, those ducts means that what comes out of the register in the floor is a lot warmer because once that fires up uh, and the thermostat calls for heat, it's heating up all that metal first and then it's heating up the basement and you're not down there enjoying it. So it's like turning back the thermostat in the basement and turning it up for your house. So insulating that ductwork is really important. And again, you know, they can help you figure out uh, what products to get and, uh, and the right tapes uh, to be able to seal it all together. Some great videos there, but very important. Um, and I'm just going on the list uh, on efficiency mains uh, uh, rebate form but I would seal your ducts first. It's a real pain to insulate them and then take the insulation off so you can seal them. So seal them first. And um, what is duct sealant? Well, I went, I mean, I don't wanna throw them under the bus, but I went to Maine Hardware and they'd never heard of duct sealant before <laughs> and they don't carry it there. And I encourage them to do so and they could get a gallon pail and I'd be shocked if any of you could use a gallon pail. If there's an octopus in your basement of all this ductwork, maybe you would. But I have seen it at Home Depot and Lowe's and you can probably order it online. But the basic idea is it's kind of like the consistency of like a really thick mustard with fibers in it. Uh, it's like a, a very loose caulking and typically you'll brush it on every single seam. So see all those um, individual uh, duct seams. Um, you're sealing that up so that there's no air leakage through the ducts and they all come up to the register in the floor. And there's a lot of videos talking about it uh, in, the, uh, in the playlist I shared. Tank wrap. Um, tank wrap, this is for, a, uh, yeah, it's, it's all wrapped in there. You can't even see it. Um, that's, a, that's a hot water tank. And um, typically um, we're, we're hoping to make these kind of hot water heaters is extinct, but these straight electric 
hot water heaters uh, are still out there. Often the least expensive one is what gets installed in an emergency and they have very poor insulation. Um, so it's helpful to insulate a straight electric, not a heat pump water heater because they're usually insulated sufficiently um, unless Andy thinks we should. Do, do you think we should do a heat pump water heater? Oh, I, I agree with you completely. <laughs> and um, and you don't, you don't want to do it with a gas water heater. That's a little trickier. It could be possible, but you know, there's fire in there and you don't want to cause a fire. Uh, that's a more advanced thing. I, I wouldn't recommend it. I would replace your gas water heater with a heat pump water heater instead or encourage your, your landlord to do so. And um, there is one small exception. Sometimes there's some side tanks that go next to a boiler. And usually they're very well insulated, but I've run across some that have had a, a failure uh, inside where they feel hot to the touch outside. And if they do feel hot to the touch outside, some sort of leak has happened inside of it and it needs to be replaced. And I would only use the, uh, the wrap in the interim because it might take a couple of years for the plumber to be available to come replace it for you. Um, but even then it's only in a pinch. Um, and finally, foam board insulation. Um, this is really handy for sealing up bigger holes. You could use it for um, trying to contrive something uh, with some foil tape or something to put over a drop, a pull down stairwell uh, from into the attic. Or you could use it to block off the bulkhead entryway and you could seal around it with like some foil tape. Foil tape is not one of the things listed here, but it's a great way of having a reversible positive seal and it sticks to a lot of different things, including your fingers really well and to itself. <laughs> but, uh, but the foam is really great. Or if you have basement windows that are just super leaky or there's a window broken or whatever, you could just cut something out, put it into the basement window and use some foam around the edges just to kind of lock it into place. So that's just kind of a, a quick play-by-play -play of all these different strategies. And I would really love to hear your questions. Um, hopefully I didn't miss any raised hands here just blathering on, but I, I really am eager to help you strategize on what to do. Thanks so much for all of that uh, helpful information. And um, yeah, if, if anyone has a question, just go ahead and raise your hand and I'll, I'll call on you or... Um, or Richard will see or Andy will see and we'll be able to get to your questions. Um, I did want to say that, you know, you mentioned the, the videos a couple of times and I want to make sure everybody knows I'm going to send um, the link to that playlist out to everyone that registered for the event tonight, along with a recording of this event. So, um, you know, if you miss anything or you want to go back or you want to watch those videos, um, you're able to. Um, Andy, I did have a quick question to get started, but um, how long does the $100 DIY rebate um, go for? I'm glad you asked. That's a little ping. It um, it's, uh, goes to the end purchases made by the end of December. That's the last purchase. And then you need to submit your claim within 90 days of the purchase. So we've got another four or five weeks to, for us to pay 100% of your costs doing these upgrades Richard just went through. Right. Looks like Aaron Mitchell. Hello? Oh, hi. Oh, this is another Aaron. Um, I live in Portland. Can you guys hear me? Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm really enjoying listening to this super helpful advice. I have um, a house in Portland, it's only 1,250 1, square foot uh, sweet square feet. It was built in 1920. Um, so I was thinking that maybe a good idea would be to um, get insulation blown in. Um, does that, is that gonna make the biggest difference? Do you guys think um, everything else is sealed up fairly well? I mean, for the age of the house, it's got mostly new windows, but um, I still probably end up spending around, or I still end up using probably around six to 600 to 800 gallons of oil. And I do have a hot water tank that probably needs to be replaced too. But what, what's gonna give me the biggest bang as far as trying to get my oil bill down? 
Richard, do you want to start with that one? Sure. Well, well, one of the things to uncover is where that six to 800 gallons of oil is going. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I, I like to be warm. Yeah, but, but you know, it's sometimes surprising and probably one of the biggest things to figure out is how much is heating your hot water and how much is heating your home. And um, one way to, to sneak, uh, sneak a peek at the hot water is look for your last oil fill date of the heating season. So if you're blessed with coincidence and they arrive a Memorial Day weekend and fill up your tank, and then they come back, uh, you know, Columbus Day weekend to, to do another fill. That's the perfect world because you don't need too much heat, hopefully, between Memorial Day and Columbus Day or, or Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, so uh, you can take the total gallons if they filled it to the top on both times and divide it by the number of days. And I'm shocked at the number of times that I measure a gallon per day or three quarters of a gallon per day. And a lot of it necessar isn't necessarily heating your water. It's just sitting there on standby. So it may well be that if you can figure out a way to have that turned off or turned down significantly and get a heat pump water heater. Yeah, that's what I'm, um, I'm really looking at that. That seems like a good idea. That, that, that could shave off, you know, 100, 200, 300 gallons a year. And, um, and so that's, that's a big one. But in terms of your, your attic, it really depends on your house. It's a little trickier to diagnose without seeing your house. Is it full two, two story or is it a yeah. cape? It's a two, full two story with an attic and a um, partially finished basement. Yeah, the rebates are so awesome from efficiency main to air seal your attic and to insulate it that you know if it's pretty straightforward to to do that up there you know that that makes a lot of sense is your foundation wall insulated no no well and i mean is it insulated it would only be around yes it is i'm sorry it is insulated okay so if the attic might be the next greatest step but you know all all the vendors are, are trained to figure out you know how to maximize this but i think it's a combination potentially of insulation and air and, sealing and they and come in and actually blow it in your walls now does that make a huge difference um it certainly makes it more comfortable it's a lot more cost to install it in wind in in a, in a wall because you're dealing with an interior surface that you need to patch up and fix or an exterior surface okay and it definitely makes you know when i started my business because i was working on my house and my walls weren't insulated. I'm writing my business plan and freezing and my, my hands are numb. And there's, there's a big benefit to being comfortable, um, especially if you're working from home as I was, as I was doing. So, you know, there yeah, I, my, other during benefits. COVID, they moved me to work from home full time. So I'm, <laughs> my energy costs have definitely gone up in the last three years. And that's part of the strategy is maybe where you work during the day, those the walls basement. get insulated. It's pretty cold. I'm going to have to move it up to the first floor this yeah. January. It's too cold. Yep. Is that helpful, Aaron? Yes. Thank you. Um, I want to just do a little pitch here to follow up on Richard's comments, all of which I agree with 100%. But if you look at efficiencymain.com, that's where you can find, you can buy a heat pump water heater. Just six months ago, it was $1,800 before rebate. It's now $549 after instant discount. There's no waiting for a rebate check. You walk with $549, you walk out with what was a $1,700 water heater. Um, so that's really attractive. And just to echo what I said before, on the insulation, depending on your income, everyone's eligible for something, but depending on your income, you're eligible for rebates at 40 to 80% of the insulation work. So that now's a great time to get started. I saw a hand up from Pam, I think. Did you have a question? Pam Casey, go ahead. Thank you. I had to unmute myself too. Um, so um, you were talking about, you know, having help uh, at the hardware store or whatever to get some of these products. Um, is it also possible to get them on Amazon or something and, and get rebates through with that too? Just receipts yes, absolutely okay. absolutely the, 
the, the fine print is mostly geared toward installing it in a main home, regardless of where you buy it. But yes, you can buy online. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for the question. I have a, I have a question. Um, kind of, you mentioned the basement installation. And I was, I've heard some people, you know, have concern about basement insulation and because they maybe have a humid basement or it's damp. Is how is that an issue or is that something people need to think about? Or? Uh, absolutely. Well, there's a lot of things to think about overall because as you improve insulation, you reduce drying. As you make a house tighter, you reduce drying. You have indoor air quality concerns, and that's that's why Efficiency Maine requires the Building Performance Institute certification, which looks at the whole house approach. It's a little bit like medicine. You don't want to, you know, cure cure someone's cancer and give them a heart attack. You know, <laughs> and and uh, you know, in essence, you know, to answer your question a little bit more directly, Maine's old houses often don't have a lot of good moisture control. Of, of groundwater coming into the basement. Sometimes there's a river that runs through it, literally. Um, and we have this humid summer climate. So trying to sort out exactly how to manage humidity in the summer and bulk water in the rainy seasons, you know, that's, that's all part of it. And it could involve gutters, for example, but that's a much broader discussion. But that's something that vendors are trained to look at that whole house approach. I think Marilyn has a question. Do you, do you have a question, Marilyn? No, okay. I thought I saw your hand up. So can you tell us a little bit about lower door tests, Richard? Like how does, what is, how does that work? Well, it's a, it's a very interesting process. Uh, you know, Andy, uh, Andy and I have spent a lot of time working at Efficiency Maine. And when, when I first met him, I took him around on a few of my blower door tests. And, uh, you know, you, you, uh, you think you figured out a house. And then once you actually do the blower door test, then you really learn all the stuff that you wouldn't have known to begin with. It's a little bit like a taste test before you serve the soup. <laughs> There's a lot of things that are obvious, like you can see that the soup's burnt. Um, you can smell, uh, you can smell if it's pleasant or not. But until you really um, taste it, it, it's it's hard to know for sure. And a blower door test is like that. We also want to see an improvement. Um, so all the air sealing rebates uh, and you know all the air sealing rebates have a requirement of a before blower door test and an after blower door test. So it helps diagnose the house. In simpler houses, um, there's usually not too many surprises. Um, in older houses, uh, with this L off to here, and there's three attics and two crawl spaces, and you've got $10,000, where am I going to put it first? It really helps you replicate a mid-winter day, January 15th, without waiting for it. And you can really count all the leaks and figure it out. Um, but even a house uh, that is built fairly well still has airflow and leaks um, just because it is, it, it is difficult. But essentially, you bring the house under a negative pressure, 50 pascals, uh, which is about the, the, like, like 30, 35 mile an hour winds hitting the house from all directions at the same time. And, um, and your suction on the inside. So all the air comes in where you, know, you say, come out, come out wherever you are, you can see it. And then if the weather is conducive to it, if it's warm or cold, then infrared camera can catch all the warmth coming in in the summer or the cold coming in in the winter and help you diagnose where to go. Um, is it absolutely necessary? It's pretty nifty to be able to do it. And it's an important quality assurance tool. Um, a skilled person going into a house can identify the same things um, uh, visually. Uh, on a simpler house, it's not as critical. But if you have a complex house, or especially I hear stories where, oh, I had insulation blown in the attic, I replaced all the windows, I replaced my water heater, and my bill is still 800 gallons, you know, that, that's when you really need to figure out, okay, let's figure out how to get to that last bit. But at the same time, we need to have adequate air quality for a house too. So it helps you assess the house on 
what the average air leakage is and if that's sufficient for average air quality. Um, and that's part of the process of why it's done at the end because it's, it's important to have control over the air, um, but you need some, some, some airflow which doesn't necessarily have to be air leakage. It could be fans or, or ducted systems, but it's good to know if you get very, very tight, which is usually only possible in a few cases and you're really trying hard, um, that you, you have a plan, which could be as simple as you know, having a bathroom fan running intermittently. Uh, so. Great, yeah, thanks. Oh, I see Andy popped off. Oh, there you are. I'm back. I, was, I have one other question too. So I know you have, we have great efficiency and rebates. People can get um, rebates. Um, so what if, is it, what, do you have a, if people have um, a project and they, even rebates are great, but there's still a gap. Do you have other options for people who may need a little bit of a loan or anything? Is there something that Fishing Bank can help with? Yes, uh, thank you. The, um, we offer very generous rebates. And then for the portion of the upgrade that the rebate doesn't cover, we gladly offer loans. We offer thousands of loans to Mainers across the state. Um, we're not in it for the for the banking business. We're in it to try and make energy efficiency uh, affordable for people. So uh, there's no chart, no fees associated with applying for the loan or originating the loan or prepaying the loan or paying it off early. Um, there are no fees associated with that. It's either 4.99% or 5.99%, which Today's market is actually very low rates. Um, and um, you can apply for the loan, again, at no charge at efficiencymain.com. You can apply 24 uh, seven, go online at your convenience, enter your information, a lot of information. Um, and then within three business days, we'll get back to you and tell you whether or not you're approved for a loan. Um, and it would be, just to be clear, it's for a loan for a project that is rebate eligible. So if you want a new roof or front steps, we don't have rebates for roofs or front steps. This is not a home energy, home equity loan. It's a home energy loan. So it'd be work done for insulation or heat pumps or heat pump water heaters or things that we offer rebates for. But they've been very popular. We're told that um, it's quick, it's easy, and it's not very expensive. And all the underwriting criteria are listed on our website. So you can actually see before you even apply um, it, what you would uh, qualify for. Does that answer the question, Troy, about uh, home equity, home energy loans? Yes, thank you very much. And that's I a appreciate good service question. you provide. Yeah. If, if, if people participate in our programs, all the um, upgrades that we rebate by law, we can't rebate that unless they're cost effective. So people often ask, what's the payback on insulation or heat pumps or heat pump water heater? And if you finance it, there's no payback. You get richer immediately. You have a, it's called cash flow positive. You will immediately be saving more on energy than it costs you to pay back the loan. And as Richard says, once you're done paying off the loan, the savings continue and, and now you start paying yourself. So it's the, the sooner you start, the, the better. And we, we'd like to try to eliminate financial barriers for everybody, if not through rebates, then, or if not through rebates alone, than with a combination of rebates and financing. So we, we've had a lot of success. We will issue probably uh, 35,000 rebates uh, this year, and we'd like everyone on this call to participate in our programs. Uh, well, I see now it's we've, we've gotten to eight o'clock. Um, if there's no other questions, go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question. Um, but I did want to take a, just a second to thank Richard and Andy for um, their presentations tonight and all of the answers to all these great questions. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, I know there was a lot of information um, in the last hour. So um, look out for, I'll send an email sometime tomorrow, um, you know, with this recording and the playlist. And we'll go ahead and also include the slides that were presented tonight. Um, and yeah, if you if you have a question that you think of later on, feel free to reach out. Um, I know that the efficiency main number was in the Andy's presentation and um, Evergreen's information was also in Richard. So I'm sure that they're two really great resources. So um, yeah, thank you so much, Andy and Richard and everybody else for, for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Erin. Nice job. Thank you.
All right. Have a nice night. Thank you.